Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding here to discuss the basics of FBAR violations. By way of background, the FBAR is Foreign Bank and Account Reporting. It is uh, filed electronically each year on a FinCEN Form 114. FinCEN is the Financial Crimes and Enforcement Network. As we like to reiterate here, uh, it's rarely ever criminal, so try to remove the term criminal when you're thinking about FBARs. Uh, FBARs are filed at the same time your tax return is filed. If you apply for a tax return extension, as of now, your FBAR goes on extension as well. There's no additional FBAR extension form required. Of course, that may change in the future. Something to keep in mind. Uh, a practice point we come across uh, regularly. You don't have to actually file a tax return to be required to file an FBAR. Maybe you've got a million dollars in foreign accounts that generate no income, so you don't have a tax return requirement. You may still have an FBAR requirement. Uh, when it comes to individuals, there's mainly three categories. U.S. citizens, uh, legal permanent residents, aka green card holders, and foreign nationals such as uh, someone here on a visa, B1, B2, L1, E2, H1B, uh, EB5, O1, etc., etc. If those individuals meet the substantial presence test in any given year, they're considered a U.S. Per person for that year, excuse me, and they have to file the FBAR. Also, entities, trusts, corporations, partnerships, other businesses, they may have an FBAR reporting requirement as well. It's not limited to just individuals. FBAR violations at its core just means you didn't file the FBAR correctly. Maybe you didn't file it timely, uh, maybe you never filed it, or maybe you filed it incomplete. There's no particular penalty for filing late. It's just if you don't file it timely and accurately, completely, you can be subject to the penalties. Now, you've probably read lots of fear-mongering websites online. They make you think you're going to go to prison for life, uh, pay a 50% penalty up front per year uh, to exceed the value of your accounts, etc. It's not true. Um, there are two different categories of civil penalties. You have uh, willful and non-willful. The non-willful penalties have four layers to it. It's a warning letter in lieu of penalty, a single $10,000 penalty for all of your horrible FBAR violations, uh, a $10,000 penalty per year, $10,000 penalty per account per year, up to a certain uh, value. It's normally 50% is the most that they can go up to, according to the Internal Revenue Manual. Uh, that $10,000 is subject to uh, cost of living adjustments and inflation. Right now, I think it's around twelve dollars to 13000 The willful penalties are bad if you get stuck in there. Uh, willful penalties are 50% maximum value per year, up to 100% value on the account. But there's an alternative, which is a $100,000 penalty is the floor. So... It's 50% maximum value or 100,000, whatever is greater. Uh, there are some conflicting regulations. Most courts have said it doesn't matter. The IRS is not limited to a single $100,000 penalty or a single $100,000 penalty per year. Uh, the IRS has significantly increased enforcement of these violations. Oftentimes, clients are coming to us. Uh, the IRS has filed a lawsuit. Uh, they go pretty aggressive. Because FBAR violations cannot be fought in, uh, in tax court. So uh, the recipient of the penalty has to either uh, pay it and sue for refund in federal court or wait to be sued and defend and possibly counterclaim. If you think you committed an FBAR violation, uh, generally the best strategy going forward is to hire an attorney and submit to one of the amnesty programs. There's various programs. Uh, some of the more common are the traditional voluntary disclosure program takes over where OVDP uh, closed back in 2018. In March 2019, a memo was issued that expanded the traditional voluntary disclosure program uh, to entail further offshore reporting. If you're non-willful, you have uh, various options, maybe the streamlined domestic or the streamlined foreign. You, uh, each program has its own set of nuances, but both programs require that you're non-willful. There's also alternatives to the streamlined program. There's delinquent international information return submission procedures. If it's just FBARs, there's the delinquent FBAR procedures uh, or delinquent FBAR submission procedures. 
and then you always have reasonable cause as an alternative. Uh, that's a basic introduction to FBAR violations. If you'd like some more information, of course, go to our website, goldinglawyers.com. We have a pretty expansive uh, FBAR library. Uh, we also have another website, a uh, sister website, devoted exclusively to the Streamline program, which is irsstreamlinedprocedures.com. Again, I'm Sean Golding with Golding and Golding. Uh, thank you for your time.